Prime Minister Modi has just returned from a successful state visit to the US. The US-India joint statement put out by the White House on June 22, 2023 is a mine of information. In this video, we will focus on what the two countries have said about clean energy transition and we will also discuss the significance of what was said. So first let us take a look at what has been said. We will focus only on five or six broad themes, important points that emerge from this text and we will see the significance of at least one or two of them. Number one, the US India new and emerging renewable energy technologies action platform is to be launched. Two, India will co-lead hydrogen breakthrough agenda. Three, some Indian companies have announced investments in the US, totally about $2.3 billion. A global biofuels alliance is to be launched next month. A payment security mechanism is to be created for e-buses. And talks about nuclear energy have been revived. See, these are broad themes. Now, of these, let us take three points of this and discuss them, you know, in a little detail. The first one is this, the hydrogen breakthrough agenda. Now, what is this hydrogen breakthrough agenda? Now, something called a breakthrough agenda was launched at the Glasgow Climate Conference, COP26, in November 2021. 45 world leaders committed to work together this decade to accelerate innovation and deploy clean technologies in five areas power road transport steel hydrogen and agriculture you can think of uh, breakthrough agenda as a sort of a totally a, a more intense international cooperation which might involve technology transfers development of common standards and protocols and making finance available and so on and so forth so these are the broad five breakthrough agendas and when this was announced in Glasgow, the hydrogen breakthrough agenda was to be co-led by three countries, the UK, the EU group and the US. That time there was no mention of India and now according to this joint statement which was released last week, India has joined as a co-lead. This is important because India has huge green hydrogen ambitions. The ambition that India has is to create green hydrogen capacities of at least 5 million tons by 2030. This is quite a tall order. This requires a lot of infusion of technology and finance from abroad and therefore India being at the helm of this hydrogen breakthrough agenda is going to be a big help. Now second point is this, the global alliance for biofuels and this is to be launched next month, this is July 2023. Now go back a little. In, it was in February 2023 that the government of India announced that it was working on this alliance along with Brazil and the US. The alliance aims at facilitating cooperation for promoting sustainable fuels. Now, India has a large ethanol blending program going on. The idea is that by 2025-26, every litre of petrol sold will contain 20% of ethanol. A methanol program is sure to follow very shortly, therefore they are very green. Brazil and the US are among the two countries that are very well experienced in handling these blended fuels. You know, therefore this global biofuel alliance will enable India to learn a lot, to pick up a lot from other countries and this is going to be a big help. Now India has been very keen that this alliance comes into being during its G20 presidency. Now, the, clearly the United States is supporting India and therefore it is a very significant point. And finally, this is again probably in my mind the most important point of whatever was said in this joint statement. The announcement of setting up of a payment security mechanism for e-buses. Now, as India rolls out tenders for e-buses, the e-bus manufacturers say, Tata Motors, Switch Mobility, and Electra, a few of them, they produce these buses and they run the buses on behalf of the various transport undertakings on specified routes for a per kilometer fee. Now, the key problem here is the fear 
what if the state transport undertakings do not pay the bus operators their dues? Now, you run the bus, operate the bus for a month or two, and uh, you are entitled to earn a per kilometer fee, but if the state transport undertaking does not pay or delays payments, where do you go? You have already invested in making these buses and running. So, that is the big problem. The fear is well grounded. After the bad experience that the independent power producers have had in dealing with the various state electricity distribution companies or DISCOMs. DISCOMs, as many of us know, have uh, delayed their payments to the companies from whom they buy power. And this bad experience has kind of made these bus operators also similarly apprehensive about whether they will get their payments in time or not. And therefore, the need of the hour is a kind of a guarantee for these bus operators to get their payments. Just to recap a little bit, India has had three tenders so far. The first two tenders for e-buses have been very successful. The first bus tender resulted in uh, the award of contracts for producing and running 5,450 buses. The second bus tender also resulted in the award of 5,645 e-buses. Now, up to this point, it has been okay because bus manufacturers were able to take a little bit of risk. And now they are throwing up their hands and saying, look, we can't take any more risk. We need some kind of a guarantee that we will get our dues back. Now, this is the significance of this payment security mechanism. Business line has learned that the Rockefeller Foundation will be bringing in $135 million and the US government will chip in with another $15 million to create a $150 million fund. Now, this $150 million fund has the potential to unlock about $3 billion of capital that can support something like 10,000 to 12,000 e-buses. And they would not happen if it were not for this payment security fund. This is something that can be operationalized very quickly and therefore I am saying this is a very significant point that emerges from the US-India joint statement. So, to sum up, the US-India joint statement has a lot of goodies for India's clean energy transition and that is very heartening. For more videos on India's green transition journey, please do subscribe.